So I'm now moving on to some of the diseases transmitted by ticks. All of you live in tropical countries, you're veterinarians, so you would have encountered these diseases. So bovine babesiosis is one disease and it has several synonyms. Pyroplasmosis, Texas fever, red water because of the, the red urine, and of course tick fever. And just a little summary of bovine babesiosis. It affects, um, well, babesiosis in itself, it'll affect a wide variety of mammalian hosts. We have babesia of dogs, babesia in cats, okay? And of course, babesia of our herbivores. And you have babesia in man, which by the way is not really screened for, but it is a problem, babesia microti, which um, causes, it's a, a new and re-emerging disease. So the symptoms would be anything doing um, anything causing blood um, destruction. So you have intravascular hemolysis, and then it affects the brain. It causes anemia, ataxia, anorexia. So it's a protozoal organism. I know you can't see it here, um, of the family pyroplasmida. And just a point to note that malaria also belongs to this, this family. And we know that in cattle, it's transmitted by Worfless microplus, now called Ripicephalus microplus, and Worf, and this is a one who stick. Okay, so we all have the experience of morbid morbidity in local breeds, and of course, high mortality in any imported animals, causing a major constraint to improvement of livestock. So we're just going to look at the life cycle of Babesia, because when you understand the life cycle, you're going to understand the methods that. Um, scents are trying to use to, to combat it. So it has two, two stages, basically, in the mammalian host and in the tick. Okay, so in the mammalian host, you have the stage called the mirozoite, which um, affects the red blood cells, and there's asexual reproduction of these pyroplasms. They are piriform shaped, and with asexual reproduction, they go and they parasitize other red blood cells. And then when this, um, Tick, tick bites um, a host with the um, mirozoites. Inside the tick, they form gametocytes, gametes and gametocytes, and these gametocytes form zygotes and then kinetes, and these kinetes, they spread to all the other organs in the tick, okay, including the eggs. So that's how you get transovarial transmission. And as in the egg, the, as the kinetes spread, they go into the salivary glands of the tick, which, by the way, is not located in the mouth spot. It's located in the, well, the cavity of the tick, this part of the tick here. And when the, um, the tick, adult ticks, or suck on the, onto the cattle, they would transmit the sporozoites into the host, which, again, turns into mirozoites, and then the cycle just spreads and spreads and spreads. So it's important to note that these larvae these eggs on the ground, they can remain dormant for a long time, okay? So you can have transovarial transmission just sitting down there waiting for the right conditions for these eggs to hatch um, into the larvae, okay? And therefore, the distribution in our region, um, just a snapshot again, United States is but they're always under threat from Mexico. And we in the Caribbean, um, have, we know we have clinical disease, and of course in different parts of Africa and Asia. As one of our colleagues yesterday said, uh, we don't know how updated these, um, this data is, but this is what we got from, from the OIE website. Clinical signs, most of us probably have noticed these. I mentioned them before already. I don't know if you can see this, but you can get, of course, um, jaundice, de debilitation, um, neurological signs, abortion, weak calves, and everything. Most cases often seen in adults, and symptoms can appear any time after exposure to ticks, usually between two to three weeks. It's thought that animals younger than nine months are asymptomatic, but just looking at the um, severity, Babesia bulvis is more pathogenic than by, by Gemina, which is more pathogenic than, than divergence. Divergence is known to be a pathogen of human beings as well. So postmodern findings, anemia and hemorrhage. You have these pyriform bodies in the RBCs. This is actually from a sample taken from the, the vet school. 
take samples from the air or tail vein. Other methods of, of course, will be PCR, which is what I've done, reverse line blotting, targeting. There are different genes, but one of the easiest genes to target is the 18S hypervariable region. Diagnostic tests, of course, we know serology, um, different types of serology. ELISAs, a competitive ELISA can be used to complement fixation. Um, ELISA for B by Gemina is not well validated as yet. Okay? So, vaccines control. Vaccines, that's a hot topic. We all want to vaccinate because we know we're all trying to bring in animals and they always get Babesia. So, how do we go about it? So, this is just a very, very, um, as I say, a popcorn summary. Babesia species isolated from infected cattle and you have to get in, um, spinectalized calves and, and basically um, attenuated by passage through these calves. And then you store these, these, the blood in liquid nitrogen or dry ice. And then, of course, you can vaccine. And what's important is that you get long-lasting immunity from, from these vaccines. Okay? So moving on to anaplasma, very similar to Babesia. Um, similar clinical signs. Again, mortality depends on the strain the host challenge and of course the breed we know that imported cattle are very susceptible local no local breeds are are quite resistant it's thought that the water buffalo is also quite resistant to it and again it's a major constraint to the production of livestock in the region it's a bacteria um family anaplasmaticae and in the, that that family you have the genus anaplasma and ilicia okay Again, they're transmitted by um, ripocephalus sticks. Amblyoma species can also transmit. So to just look at briefly at the life cycle again, it's pretty simple. Um, you have the, the, the organism replicating in, in the tick and forming dense infective bodies and then transmitted to, um, to cattle um, via, um, it could be mechanical transmission. Okay, and of course, once you have mechanical transmission by both Babesia and Anaplasma is transmitted that way as well, you get just a transfer of the infected blood cells and that just continues. And these reticular, these form, these reticulated vegetative forms, they develop at, um, inside the body of the tick. Okay, so looking at the distribution, United States, has clinical evidence of bovine anaplasmosis and of course the Caribbean as well. And in Trin and on our regions, we have of course clinical evidence of anaplasmosis. We tend to have anaplasma marginally. Similar clinical signs, anemia, pale mucous membranes, debilitation, jaundice, pyrexia, available temperature, listlessness. And you can see these little bodies on the tips of the red blood cells. Um, Diagnosis again by direct microscopic examination, and of course, you can use other techniques such as PCR. On post mortem, you should be able to differentiate jaundice from an animal that's not jaundice, so yellow fat from jaundice. So, how do you do that? Usually, if it's jaundice, you're going to see yellowing in the large, um, in, the, in the ligaments and in like in the walls of the large blood vessels. So this is a, a jaundice animal, this is a normal animal. You're going to get a large um, friable spleen. Okay, this is a spleen with anaplasmosis, this is a normal spleen. Okay, so you should try and differentiate jaundice from just yellow fat discoloration, especially for cattle. And the yellow color looks, if you find it in the aponeurosis of the diaphragm, the tendons and the pleura, it could be jaundice. So you need to look very, very closely. Because you know all the cattle, they're gonna be yellow, but it would not be jaundice. You're gonna get a distended gallbladder because the animal's not eating properly, with um, thick, large, um, thick, tar-like consistency. So what do you do? Both babesiosis and anaplasmosis. Obviously, if you have an animal showing clinical signs on antimortem, especially if it has pyrexia or debilitation, it should be condemned. Okay, but if an animal has recovered from from disease but it's still showing some yellow color. It may not necessarily be to condemn that animal. The yellow color can d dissipate after, after chilling of the carcass, okay? So how do you control? So I went through the life cycles of the ticks and you can see it's very difficult. Try and control the ticks. 
through the use of acaricides. So you have the adulticides, which will only affect the adult parts, and then you may have to use larvicides, which will kill the larvae. But sometimes the larvae will be on the ground and not the adults. So in Bophilus, it's um, you're lucky in that it's a one host stick, um, at least Bophilus annulatus. So therefore, you can target um, the the adults on the animal, okay? But when you have to deal with two hosts and three host sticks, like amblyoma, so everybody will know. I work with calf with with Pelinda here, and we, there was a, a eradication program, which you know is almost impossible to do, okay? So that's why it was easier to eradicate um, Borflus microplus from the U.S. because of the fact it's the one who stick. Okay, um, try to get genetically resistant cattle. Um, try to develop your endemic stability. Okay, um, diagnose the disease early. Um, if you have imported cattle, take temperatures all the time. Watch them like a hawk. Try and treat early. It's thought that chemoprophylaxis using imidocarb may work, but that's, everybody has a different experience. Uh, so it, it's a brief description of earthwater. So it's a very important disease, it's a fatal disease for domestic and wild ruminants. The symptoms, the main symptoms are hypothermia, nervous signs, hydropericardium, pulmonary edema. The mortality depends on the strain but you can have uh, a high mortality rate with some strain and especially in some uh, breeds. Generally bovine are less susceptible to ovine, themselves uh, less susceptible to caprine. The uh, pathogen is Ehrlichia ruminatium, ruminatium. it's uh, belonging to the order Rickettsialis and family Anaplasmataceae, uh, generalized Ehrlichia. It's an obligatory intracellular uh, bacteria, so it needs to be in a cell to uh, replicate. It's exclusively transmitted by amblyomma ticks, and uh, uh, it has to uh, replicate in the, in the vector before to be transmitted in, in the animal. However, the ticks cannot maintain the bacteria uh, itself. You need to have a connection between the ticks and the, the, the cattle or, or the sheep and goats. It's a, a very important disease, economically speaking, because of the mortality, but also with the control measures you have to apply it if you want to uh, preserve the uh, livestock. For instance, in South Africa community, it costs every year about $50 million. So uh, if we go a little bit in details about the symptoms, so early share rumination after uh, the infection uh, will uh, have an, an incubation period about uh, two, three weeks. Then you have a rise in the fever, the animal uh, become uh, uh, inappetent, and the nervous symptoms can start one to, or between one and nine days after the onset of the fever. So you can see uh, some rigor in the animal. He, they can, he can be paddling. Then he, come, uh, he remain in the floor. He can also show some difficult respiratory difficulty because of the uh, edema that we uh, have in the, in the lung. And then the animal uh, has this lateral decubitus and uh, this uh, opistos, opistotonous uh, symptoms uh, uh, marked by the rigor. You can see some diarrhea in bovine mainly and then the animal uh, uh, die from the disease. If you, if you look at the uh, symptoms, uh, this is quite characteristic. You can see this hydropericardium. This is uh, why we give the uh, name earthwater. So it's a huge accumula accumulation of liquid in this uh, pericard. Uh, in, if you uh, make a, a section also in the brain, you have a replication of the bacteria in the brain, and you can see here this is a, 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 um, a vascular uh, vessel here, and you have the endothelial cell, and you can see the accumulation of the bacteria in these cells. So I'll let some information about the, the life cycle of the bacteria. So as I said, uh, the bacteria as uh, elementary bodies infect a, a cattle or a sheep or a goat, and then it will develop different stage uh, in terms of replication. And uh, you have uh, intracellular E, 
uh, macrophages and, and other cellular cells can be infected and they develop into the cytoplasm. The bacteria uh, generate vacuoles, big vacuoles, in which you have uh, reticular bodies that will give new uh, elementary bodies that are uh, catched by the ticks during blood feeding. And then these bacteria, bacteria in the ticks can uh, cross the intestinal barrier, be replic replicated, and then gain the salivary glands, and then again you can transmit the, the parasite. So only uh, amblyoma can perform this cycle. The distribution of earthwater. Uh, the origin of earthwater is sub-Saharan Africa and also some Indian Ocean Island like Madagascar, Reunion, Comoros. Uh, and uh, if for the Caribbean region, it was introduced in the uh, 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 18th century and then spread to Antigua. We had the introduction also of the ticks in uh, over part of the Anti uh, of the um, Caribbean regions, but now uh, the earth water is only present in Guadeloupe and Marie Galante is an uh, island uh, connected to Guadeloupe and Antigua. Diagnostic very rapidly, so you can, as I said, uh, took brain smears and try to localize these bacteria in the endothelial cells. We have a, a serological test, but uh, there are restrictions to use this test because uh, the uh, seroconversion is only two, three weeks after infection. So you cannot make a diagnostic on, uh, on sick animal. It's uh, too early. And the other problem is that the, the, the persistence of the antibodies is quite short. And you can uh, uh, have animals uh, uh, becoming negative after six months. And we have also uh, asymptomatic carriers with no antibodies. So the bacteria can be in the animal, but no antibodies is detected. So it can be used for cell prevalence studies, but certainly not for diagnosis on, uh, on clinical cases, and also to, uh, to make a status on important animal. On the other side, we have molecular tests, and now we have quite good tests. We use in, in our lab the nested PCR because it's a, a very sensitive test. It's 1,000-fold uh, more sensitive than a classical PCR. So you can use the ticks, but also the organs, the organs and the blood to make this PCR test. I won't go into the details in these uh, tables, but it's just to show you that we need uh, clear uh, inactivated serum for uh, serological analysis. And you can, uh, for uh, PCR, use blood sample, either uh, blood sample um, stored at minus uh, 20, if you have this possibility, but if you don't have this possibility, you can keep it at room temperature, provided that you had one volume of ethanol, 70% uh, to three volume of, volume of the, the blood. And now I'm going to, the, to finish the presentation with the control tools. So uh, I won't go back again with the acaricides. It was also presented by Carla. Now I'm talking about the vaccines. We have um, three different types of vaccines that are under studies at right now. Unfortunately, uh, none of them is uh, now commercially available, but we hope that in the future it will be. Uh, 